to another edition of Middleware Friday for Friday, September 29th, 2017. This is episode 34, and we're talking about graduating Microsoft Flows to Azure Logic Apps. No community content this time. We're going to focus solely on the feature content as it is a little bit lengthy. So what do we mean by graduating Microsoft Flow to Azure Logic Apps? And really what it is, is once you've reached a scenario where you have a citizen integrator or perhaps a IT pro who's built some sort of a Microsoft Flow and they've sort of exceeded the capabilities of their skill set. And as a result, they now need to move more into a pro dev scenario. And that's really what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to take an existing flow process that we had in episode 32 and we're going to make some changes to it as a result of changing requirements and we will then go through the process of moving this into a logic app where a pro integration team can take over the additional development and support of this particular business process. So as you may recall this was the process we had before it focused on a power company and their process of swapping out old traditional meters for the new automated meter meter infrastructure or AMI type of meters. When using these meters, you have the ability to send the meter reads over different communication protocols. One may be the power line carrier, which is actually over the power lines, but then you can also get into other ones such as RFID or even some other uh, radio frequency type solutions. Now what happens is in this process you've got a meter tech who goes ahead and installs a meter and as part of a compliance process the power company has to record the readings of the old meter and the new meter. So what uh, this is actually a real world, real world scenario um, that I was part of in an earlier life. Uh, we were using BizTalk um, but for the purposes of this example wanted to go ahead and use flow and we had to actually store these images of the old and new meters and we actually went ahead and did that in in SharePoint. Now the idea was that we would populate SharePoint with this metadata and the images and should someone call in to complain about their bill, they would have the, the contact center agent would have the ability to go ahead and uh, look that up and basically bring up both images in real time and actually validate that their meter reads are in fact correct. Now we did have some feedbacks uh, indicating that this solution from the beginning uh, didn't lend itself so much to Microsoft Flow and that it lended itself uh, more so to Logic Apps. Uh, you know, there's some fair arguments from that perspective, but bottom line is the demonstration was more about just demonstrating how you could actually use Flow to consume Azure event grid events. Um, but regardless, we're going to change the scenario and we're going to move it to logic apps. So these are the new requirements. We need to be able to integrate these events into the work order management system. Now, what we've been able to determine is that the process is working well in the sense that the computer vision API is able to accurately detect whether or not the photo is that of an image. And really what this is all about is we do not want to be storing images if they're poor. Uh, for example, if the technician took a, a picture of their foot instead of the meter, we don't want to store that as being the actual truth. Then having a customer call in complaining that, uh, you know, that their meter read is wrong and then the contact center agent having bad data to work off of. But what we're going to say is, if the computer vision API detects that the image is in fact a meter, we're going to go ahead and automatically close the work order. So what this allows us to do is to take a manual step away from the field technician and actually close that work order automatically so that they can actually focus on switching out the next meter and not be concerned with actual logging into systems to close out work orders. Now in the event that the image is not detected as being a meter, perhaps it's a dog or something else, we want to update the work order with a failed state and, but, and we'll also send an email notification. 
So what this allows us to do is to proactively mark it as bad so that this can be fixed sooner rather than later. We certainly don't want to drag this process out for a long period of time. And you know, perhaps that technician has now moved over to the next community and then they have to actually drive back to the older community in order to actually fix that meter. We don't want to prolong that. We want to lean out this process and get some instant feedback from that perspective. So as I alluded to earlier in the slide, we want to move from a more citizen integrator persona or perhaps um, maybe an IT pro uh, persona, uh, light IT pro persona to a pro integrator persona. And in this case, this is where we need to write some code and certainly if you need to write some code, then you're definitely in the logic apps space. Uh, you're not typically in the flow space. So that's what we're going to demonstrate here today. And so, yeah, really, this is what it's all about. We're going to take existing flow process and flow artifacts and move them over to Azure and more specifically Azure logic apps, where we're going to get a more pro integrator uh, tool set um, based upon our pro integrator persona. So this is what the new process will look like. And really what's changed here is really the, in the areas of work order updates and work order completions. So this is our work order management solution. And really what we're going to do in this process is we're going to use the HTTP plus swagger connector to consume these web APIs that belong to the work order management solution. And now of course, this is going to be running in Azure logic apps and not in flow. We're gonna to continue to use the Azure event grid connector uh, where we're capturing events coming from blob storage. And we're also going to continue to use the SharePoint connector in order to record our images and their metadata inside of SharePoint online. Now, this is what the Microsoft flow previously looked like. And what we'll find is that it doesn't look all that different inside of Logic Apps, nor should it. So that's, that's good news. But this is what the, the original flow looked like. And the process of actually migrating this over to Azure Logic Apps is fairly simple, at least this step is. So if you go to like the home area for the Microsoft Flow itself, you click on more, then come down to export. Now there's two options here. You can export package. And really what you, this is used for is within Flow, there's different environments. Like you could have a test environment or a production environment, and you can actually use this as a tool to migrate flows back and forth across those different environments. Now, in this case, what we do want to do is we want to export as a Logic Apps template, which is, is essentially a JSON file. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then what will happen is you have the ability to download this file and what this really looks like is, um, you know, a Logic Apps definition um, based upon this deployment template. So this will look pretty familiar if you have done Logic App works in the past. Um, here's references to our various connections and then other resources as defined within the file itself. Next, we want to go into the Azure portal. And once we're in the Azure portal, you can go ahead and click on the new button. And once you've had the new button, you can then click on everything and then come over here and type template deployment. When you go ahead and type that, you'll see this entry show up. Go ahead and click that. You will then be prompted to click the create button. And then what you want to do is go ahead and click on build your own template link. Once you are, have clicked that link, uh, you're now going to have the ability to edit this template. And in this case, what we're going to do is click on the load file link, which allows us to upload the file we just exported from the flow website. And here's, here is the exact template that was exported. Uh, we're now going to go ahead and click save. And then this is going to get loaded into Azure. Now, when you're running inside a flow, there's a lot of abstraction going on for you in terms of like what region it's running in. Um, it's not directly associated with one of your, you know, Azure uh, subscriptions or your resource groups, that sort of thing. But now that it's going to be running inside of Azure Logic Apps, 
these are all parameters that we need to actually provide and provision. Now, in this case, um, it is also good to be aware that you, there's consumption charges related to this, right? So you will get prompted to click a purchase button. And the idea now is that you could be moving a process from Microsoft Flow, where you have some level of entitlement under your Office 365 agreement to now a pure consumption-based model inside of Logic Apps where this will show up on a bill uh, somewhere. Uh, the good news is this, that Azure Logic Apps is very competitively priced and it is truly based on consumption. So the more you use it, the more you'll spend in a graduated um, licensing model or tiered licensing model. Um, but otherwise, um, if you don't execute it a lot, you will pay just very little in order to actually run that. Uh, once you go ahead and provide all of those parameters and properties, um, you will then go ahead and you know click the purchase button as I had just mentioned. Now, what I did run into was when I went ahead and clicked on the purchase button and the process did execute, my deployment failed. Initially, I was a little bit stumped in terms of how do I get more information about why it failed. And what you do need to do is you need to click on the deployment failed. Um, it looks just like a label, but it is actually a link. You click on that link, it'll actually take you over to this page where you do have the ability to uh, redefine any of your inputs. And um, once you go ahead and do that, it'll give you some sort of a state, whether or not um, something's been created um, or if it already exists and it's okay. So I had to do a little bit of cleanup there. Um, once I had done that uh, cleanup, I could go ahead and click redeploy and I was able to get it in um, into Azure itself. Uh, here is just a message indicating that the deployment did succeed. And if we go ahead and click on the resource group, I'll see now my Azure Logic app, which in this case was called subscribe meter events and any of the other API connections that are required for this. Do note, I did have some of these other services in here prior. Um, so it's not like I went ahead and created all of these redundant things. That's not the case. It's going to create whatever is um, included in your template file itself. Now, one thing to be aware of is you do need to fix your connections. Even though they are referenced inside of your template, you will need to go ahead and re-authenticate uh, all of those different connections. So it's not a huge deal, uh, just something to be aware of. When you do that initial um, you know, edit inside of Logic Apps, you're going to see these exclamation marks. And really all that is, is it's indicating that you need to go ahead and fix those connections. Once I went ahead and fixed all of the connections, I can now see that this uh, Logic App looks very similar, if not identical, to what I had in Flow. Now here's where I need to go ahead and make a few edits. Um, as I mentioned before, I need to do some integration with the work order management solution. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add an HTTP plus Swagger action in both branches. And then basically, I'm gonna go ahead and parse the file name in order to pull the work order number out of the file name, the, the image that was uploaded to blob storage. And then in this case, this is a successful execution where the tag names does include meter. So the computer vision API did detect that I had a meter and it's gonna go ahead and mark that work order as complete. Now, if it doesn't detect it as being a meter, we're gonna go ahead and mark that work order as failed. So this is really where I'm in that pro integration uh, persona where I needed to write an API, which is out of scope for the purposes of this demo. But I wrote an API, um, exposed the metadata, then I have the ability now to consume this into an Azure Logic app. And certainly this would align to that pro integrator persona where you're now writing code and dealing with Swagger and, um, and doing importing web API definitions. Now, another thing to be aware of, which I didn't realize right off the bat, was that sure, sure enough, I, I went ahead and I fixed everything up with the connections. I added my additional two actions to call the web API. And then I went ahead and created an event using the Azure Event Grid capabilities as part of blob storage. And it, I noticed it didn't fire. And I'm trying to figure out why. And the reason is you do have to enable the logic app, which makes complete sense when you really think about it. 
um, you've just imported something, you've made some changes, you've saved it, it does make sense to explicitly have to enable uh, that logic app. So once I did enable that logic app, uh, I did create another event and it actually ran right away and it did run successfully. So let's just go ahead and do a live demo of this particular scenario. So we're in the Azure portal. Uh, we're in the actual storage account where these events will get driven whenever we have something added to our blob storage container. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a file here. And in this case, we're gonna select this particular image, which will represent the happy path and a meter itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on this and click upload. And then if we jump over to our logic app run, let's go ahead and refresh. Sure enough, we will find that our execution was successful. We went through the event grid, we did some parsing, uh, we then sent the image itself through the computer vision API. It came back as being detected as a meter. We went ahead and created that event inside of SharePoint. And then we went ahead and updated the work order and marked it as complete. And we can see the status coming back from the work order management system indicating that the update status is now true. So success. So it's successfully executed. Let's now head back and we will test the other path. So in this case, we're just gonna simulate that um, someone has taken a picture of their boots as opposed to the meter because they weren't handling the camera correctly. So let's go ahead and upload this file. And then let's jump back over to Azure Logic Apps. We'll hit refresh. And we'll see here is the event itself. And as we can see, it detected that it was not an image. So let's see exactly what it figured it was. So it figured that it was shoes on a person's feet and it was 70% accurate or 70% confident. And these were all of the other uh, keywords or metadata that was discovered as part of that. So this would be a very simple check um, indicating that, you know, in this case, it's clearly not an image. So we're going to go ahead and send out an email um, indicating that the following image is invalid. And we're also going to mark the work order as status as failed. And we can see that in this case, the work order service did return that it was successfully updated with a status of false. So here's a, a nice way of using computer vision in order to automate some insights. And really that insight is having a computer check whether or not the images was legit or if it was a, 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 an irrelevant image. Now you could probably take this much further, I bet, and actually try to read the numbers off of the meter and do even more validation about that. But certainly for the for this particular example, uh, that's more than what we're after in this case. But hopefully you did get a sense of how you can take a business process that originated in Flow, move it over to Azure Logic Apps, and then actually plug in additional you know, pro dev scenarios where it makes sense and hand that off to a more appropriate support group. Thanks for watching another episode of Middleware Friday. And thank you, BizTalk360, for being a partner of the show. Um, if you haven't had a chance to register for the upcoming Integrate event in Redmond at the end of October, I encourage you to do that. Uh, we're about to hit another milestone in terms of the early bird pricing. Uh, so if you want to save $100 US, I would suggest you go ahead and register before the end of the month. So if you're seeing this on the 29th, then you only have really one day. Um, also, for those that may be local or can't actually attend the entire event, uh, they do have a um, offering where you can actually pay $250 a day. Here is a list of speakers. Uh, one special guest that's been added is Scott Guthrie, uh, who is going to be doing uh, some sort of a keynote session. I believe it's at the end of day one.
yeah, the closing keynote by Scott Guthrie. So you certainly don't want to miss that. Um, there is a breakdown of the of the schedule itself. Uh, looks like it will be two and a half days of Microsoft integration with a variety of different topics around BizTalk API management, Flow, Logic Apps, and the Azure messaging services like Azure Event Hubs. And I certainly would expect to see some Azure gr Event Grid being discussed as well. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch you next time on Middleware Friday.